Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Today's episode we're going to go ahead and mimic the Gmail inbox. It should look pretty familiar as uh, Gmail is pretty widely used here. But we can see we have a little bit of sender information, some information about the email itself, and then an actual date and uh, you know favorite status. We also have kind of this unread status here which has a little bit different of a font weight. Um, so let's go just go ahead and jump right into it. Smash the like button to help me out and subscribe if you're brand new and interested in this Compose content. So I've gone ahead and created a Gmail row data class here and we have a sender object, we have a subject and body as strings along with a delivery date and then we have some information here is unread, is starred, again just booleans to help us out with this UI. Our sender data class here is pretty simple. We're just gonna have the name and a color here to just help us out and build the UI that we want. So um, I've created one, uh, you know, like dummy row and, and sender information here. And we can go ahead and use that in our preview. But here we need to actually build out our composable. So let's get one last look at this uh, and rerun things here. And we can go ahead and bring it back to that state. All right, so first things first, we're gonna need a row here. Uh, and then we basically have those three different columns within that row, all right? Our first column is going to have a surface here, which will have a shape of our circle shape. Have maybe let's go ahead and set like the actual size here on that uh, element. So maybe let's say like 30 DP or something like that to start, and we could always modify it later. And we're going to go ahead and add a color here and that color is going to be the gmail row sender dot color right and inside of here we are going to want our text the text is going to be our gmail sender dot name we're going to call a function called first which gives us the character the first character of that string and then we can call to string on it bouncing down to our preview here we can very easily call a gmail row item and we can go ahead and pass in this row that we've created here. So we can go ahead and start to see our preview. All right, and over here we can see some of that coming together, but our preview isn't set up properly. So first, well, it is, but we have to modify our row here. So we're gonna say our row is going to fill max width. If we go ahead and rerun things here. We should basically get a little bit better of a view. Yep, okay, so now it's starting to look like a row. However, we do have this problem where our A is fixed in the top left corner here and if we take a look at it it's actually because the text is taking up the entire you know view or size of the surface here so i think one thing we can do is we can basically say modifier dot wrap content size and i believe that will then just shrink our text element into the minimum amount that it needs in order to to view that a and we do get it centered at that point which looks great uh, actually, that looks really good for now. So um, let's go ahead and move on to our next column here, which is going to have the text based information, right? So this is going to be a couple different uh, pieces of text here. We're going to have our sender dot name. Then we're going to duplicate this a few times. We're going to have our let's see, what was it, it was the subject. Here we need a body. So let's go ahead and just rerun this here to see what we have. And we do see this info starting to take shape. First things first, let's go ahead and move this column out a little. We're gonna do that with our modifier dot padding. We'll say horizontal is going to be eight DP. That should move it away from this A, this circle A a little bit, and also the edge on the, uh, you know, the right hand side. That looks good. We're going to add a little bit of padding in the actual row itself. So let's go ahead and say padding. Um, we can do, sorry, horizontal equals 16 dp. And our vertical is going to be 8 dp. And that should apply basically padding to our entire view here, pushing things out. And now we see that it kind of looks a little bit cleaner, which is really, really good. One thing that we notice here is the second, or not the second, the third text here kind of just wraps basically as long as the content is right um, and so our body here is quite long uh, for I mean at least for this but it could very well be the body of the email which could be paragraphs upon paragraphs so we don't necessarily want uh, obviously that whole thing to be there when we're looking at like the inbox view so there is a max lines function here or parameter that we can put we can do one 
And then we're going to need, I think it's called text. I thought it was called overflow. Oh, okay, overflow, not text overflow. And then we're going to need a text overflow. We can either do clip, ellipses, or visible. And in our case, we care for that ellipses look, right? And so that should cut things off. And there we go. Now we can see that it all wraps to one line. It's smart enough to know how far back it can go and get that little ellipses in there. Okay, so for the first pass, we're making pretty good progress here. Um, let's go ahead and create another column at this point. And this is going to have our text, which contains our Gmail row dot delivery date. And then we're going to need that image icon there, right? To basically denote if it is a favorite or not. So we can calculate this information. Let's just go with icon. We're going to say if our Gmail row dot is starred, then we're going to do icons dot filled. Else we're going to say icon dot star border. We'll import our star. And then here we have our icon. And at this point here, we're going to say like, I don't know, starred status. Go ahead and rerun things here and just see. And we do not have a final column on the right here. And I think our issue is because we have this uh, one bit of text wrapping all the way around, you know, taking up basically as much room as possible. So I think we're going to have to get into the weight concept here on our uh, modifiers. And so I wanna see if the weight of the one F on our column will do that. And it basically will. And so weight is a way, let's see what it says in the docs. Uh, okay, a little bit longer, but it's the proportional width to give this element relative to the total width of all siblings. So the docs are a little bit uh, verbose there, but more or less setting our weight here of one F is going to tell this row, right, which has these three text elements inside of it, take up as much room as you possibly can while preserving the minimum amount of room for the other you know, siblings, in this case, these left and right hand columns, while preserving space enough for them. So in previously it was taking up too much room because it was just trying to, because of this text being a little bit longer. Uh, but in this case here, we can go ahead, give it a weight, tell it take up as much room as you possibly can with respect to everything else that's on the screen here. So this is pretty dynamic. This will also, you know, expand and collapse as far as size goes. If you're on different screens, if you're on a tablet versus a phone, et cetera, this works in both the horizontal and the vertical direction as well. And we're going to see that in the vertical direction right now. So if we take a look at this area over here, we see that the, um, you know, the star and the, the date are right underneath one another, right? Which makes sense given how we've organized things in this column. But one thing that we can do here, because we basically want that star to be bottom aligned, is we can add in a spacer here. And we can say modifier, we can give it a weight of one F here. And when we go ahead and do that, we can see that this, okay, that is way too much. Put the star all the way to the bottom. So hold on. So I actually don't think there's anything wrong with our spacer implementation here. I think what we need to do here is we need to basically tell the row to kind of uh, wrap content more or less here. So we can go ahead and say our height on the row is going to be the intrinsic size minimum. And what that will do is tell basically uh, in compose world here, wrap content. And now that we can see uh, this row, its height is only as big as it needs to be to fit any of its children. And in this case, again, our middle column here that has these three pieces of text is the one that forces our, our height to be the largest. So now our row wraps uh, basically on that column. And when we go ahead and set this spacer here to say weight 1F, we can see that there is now a gap over here, right, that we've created as far as pushing the star all the way to the bottom of this row. And that's exactly what we wanted. If you're familiar with the UI, we need that star on the right, not on the left. So very simply here, we can just say horizontal alignment is going to be alignment.end on our entire column. That will also push our January 10 to be right aligned, not left aligned. But in this case, that is what we want. And now we see that the star has flipped over to the right hand side. We are all good in that regard. And realistically, I think we just have a little bit of uh, font weight to, to update with the is unread. So if you made it this far, please comment down below real fan. Let's clean this up and then let's, uh, let's just have a little summary. 
So here we're going to have our uh, our wait say if our gmail row dot is on red is simply going to be our font weight dot bold else we're going to have the font weight dot we're going to go with light and then we can just very easily apply this information here and then because we're defaulting to light in this other case we're going to have to uh, update this one where we're going to have font weight equals our font weight dot light go ahead and clean up our text here Let's, and when we go ahead and rerun things here i don't think anything's going to change other than everything being light yep but that's because we just don't have this gmail row configured with the unread but one thing that i'm going to do here bouncing down is we're going to duplicate this a few times and so here we're going to say go with we're going to copy the row and we're going to say is starred equals true and then we're going to do the same exact thing here. We'll copy the row and we'll say is unread equals true. And then we're going to do one last thing in the very bottom. And we're going to say is unread true and is starred true, right? So this is really helpful. I found this really nice because you can very easily duplicate these rows. You have one piece of information here, and then you can just modify them as you see fit and add them into a column. So we end up with something that looks like this. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, you could pause and go back. That looks pretty damn similar to how we started this episode. So I'm happy we were able to replicate that. We can basically see all the different combinations here, right? Of just a normal element, an element that's starred, unread and not starred, and unread and starred here. And we do see how this UI looks very similar to uh, the actual Gmail inbox that we're all used to seeing. And so breaking this down a little bit, looking at our Gmail row item, right? We have a top level row because everything's laid out horizontally. Within that, we have one, two, three columns here to basically create the different information that we need. And it just kind of pieces together here. I think part of this, um, you know, flexibility that we care for in the UI is our weight set to one F, which really just allows uh, you know, this whole thing to fit together nicely and take up as much room as it possibly should. So um, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching all the way through if you've made it this far. All the code is available on GitHub, so go ahead and check it out. Modify it, change it a bit, break it, make it better, make it worse, do your thing with it. Um, you know, it's all up there on GitHub for you. Again, thanks for the support. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.